pumpkin spice. So I was scrolling on TikTok, Instagram, the, the interwebs the other day, and I came across this TikTok of someone making this absolutely darling paper mache pumpkin pail. It was so cute. I was instantly inspired. And then, shortly after, I came across this person making a sign. They were turning this old pumpkin sign into a Pottsfield sign. You know, the, the pumpkin town from over the garden wall? Yeah, they like transformed this pumpkin sign into a Pottsfield sign. And then as if I wasn't being inspired enough, I came across an adorable craft being made by my dear friend, Violet Moon, of Enoch, the leader of the pumpkin people in Over the Garden Wall. So after that, I was like, all right already, I get it. I will make a freaking paper pumpkin over the garden wall craft. Fall is like, it's not here yet. The weather is not here, but we're like longing for it. Every day it gets chillier. Every day we can smell the crisp leaves. And so over the garden wall is just, I think, I feel like it's a love letter. It's a love letter to autumn. So in celebration and just kind of joining in on the fun that everyone else is participating in. I wanted to make my own pumpkin pail out of paper mache based on a character from Over the Garden Wall because let's face it, those pumpkin people from Pottsfield, there is nothing cuter. So I was looking at their faces and I'm gonna do this guy the grimace, the little button nose, the cute little like pilgrim hat, and then he's got his little ruffle. Stop it right now. So how are we constructing this little guy? Well, the base of it is going to be a pumpkin pail. And once we have him, we're gonna plan the face. We're, we're gonna sketch out and plan his features, which it's pretty straightforward. He's kind of a bunch of circles. And then whatever features we want to be sunk in or is it debossed we want to cut out so the eyes i want to have going in and the mouth i want to have going in the nose is going to be going out so we're just going to be building clay on top of that once we have the eyes and the mouth cut out we're going to cover him in this paper slop let that dry I'm really hoping that that's a quick process. Once he's dry, it's gonna be painting. We're gonna use earthy, yellow, orange, brown tones. After the paint is all good to go, we're gonna be doing the tissue behind the eyes and the mouth. Whenever you put a light in the, in the bucket, it'll glow. You'll be able to see, you know, the, the light through the eyes and the mouth. Then we're doing that ruffle, that little collar thing made out of burlap. I'm not sure about doing the hat. We're gonna have to see where we go with that. We have our list. We know what we're doing. Let's get in the car and get our pumpkin. longer than a few minutes later. Got the uh, spider web leggings on. Back from Walmart. I really did not want to go in there. Every time I go into Walmart, I feel like I'm Leslie Nope in that Parks and Rec episode where she has to go to the fourth floor. That That's how I feel. So I did not want to go into Walmart, but as I was driving, I was like, you know where is gonna be the cheapest? Walmart. Yeah, so I got a pail right here. We have our tissue paper, and then we also have this burlap 
for the like under part of the pumpkin. What is that called? So yeah, that is what I grabbed. I think first things first, let's get to looking at that face that he has and drawing it. I like to draw it on paper, cut that out and then place it. Cause then I can really like judge the space of the features and stuff. So yeah, let's get to drawing a cute little pumpkin face. We have circular eyes and then a little button nose. And then we have that mouth. That's like the grimacing awkward face, which is my personal favorite face to make. And of course we're gonna be doing this on the back so that there's like no face to compete with. Okay, so that is looking like a fun size. Probably like that height. Taking a peek at what he looks like, these need to be way closer together. Like that, yup. Then the mouth. Okay. would go like here. Thank you to everyone that recommended adhesives in my decorating video because I hate tape. <laughs> and and like, it's not really the tape's fault. It's just doing what it was meant to do, which is like tape paper together. So it's not meant to like hold a bunch of crap. So definitely my bad, but I don't like wasting with tape. Um, so all those suggestions were very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now let's get to tracing our lines on the pumpkin. Now that we have the shapes cut out of our pumpkin, now it's time to move on to the paper mache clay part. It's pretty straightforward. There's all different kinds of ways to make paper mache and clay and stuff. But what we're gonna do is heat up some water and soak paper in it. And then once it's kind of settled a little bit, we're gonna blend it. And I thought that you had to like shred paper, but I read a couple of comments on some tutorials and people were saying that they have better results when it's not shredded and it's just whole paper. So you can use paper, you can use paper towels, toilet paper, literally anything paper-based. We're gonna be using my trash. Newspaper, clippings, ads, bills that I don't want to pay. Let's get to heating up some water. A little later. Scalding hot water. We're not gonna shred anything, but we're just gonna rip this up a little bit so it fits. So it has made its way into like this slop. Do you guys like ASMR? My head is 
in such pain and turmoil. So now that this is like pretty good, we're going to get out our food processor and we're gonna move it to here and chop it all up. It literally sounds like a screaming monkey. <laughs> Okay, so this is empty now, and I'm just gonna kind of repeat. I'm gonna put more in here, blend it up, and then wring it out in here. So it's like a crumbly texture right now. We want it to obviously like stick together and to be able to form like shapes and stuff. I'm gonna grab the glue and just kind of start mixing this in. Actually, I'm gonna keep this on so that I can control. Oh no, nope, I'm gonna pour it because <laughs> that's gonna take a century. So we're gonna move this to the side. Let's go get the pumpkin and then we're gonna do a layer of glue on him. I put a piece of cardboard down because we don't wanna make a mess. And we're gonna dump the rest of this glue in here because the person that I saw do this as well, she painted the pumpkin first with glue and then she put it on and I was like, that's smart. I thought that that would help have everything stick. Without further ado, let's start putting this paper on the pumpkin. This is where we are at. Paper mache was, you know, somewhat difficult. I think I needed way more glue than I had, but that is okay. I'm just hoping that he dries. For sure. He is still wet. What I'm thinking is I could like maybe use a hairdryer. I can use a hairdryer, right? That's not gonna like do anything bad to him. Hi, how are you? Yes, I am holding an iced coffee. I know I said it's hot coffee season, but chai is just different. It doesn't count, okay? I Googled it and it said as long, you know, just be gentle. It said just lightly go over the surface. Don't hold it directly on, on an area. So pretty basic blow drying craft instructions. So let's get to it. You guys, I could only blow dry it for so long, so instead I put it on top of our cat's uh, tower here and I have the fan going. Good morning, my little paper pumpkin poots. 
patooties. Hear that? He is crispy. He is good to go. There are still some parts that like when you really press on it, it's like still, it has like a little bit of like, uh, you know, give to it, but it's not wet. The whole exterior is dry. So we're just going to go with it. And, you know, I don't have a week, but this is, this is a good little tip for you. If you wanted to do this, to know that it takes a bit, <laughs> it takes a bit to dry. So that is always good to know. We're first gonna prime him just so that the colors really pop. And then hopefully that dries pretty quick. And then we're gonna move on to the painting and the uh, additional paper clay sculpts on top of him. Okay, so the long awaited moment is here. He is dry. We have a couple of things we need to construct out of paper clay, the lips and the nose. We got our water ugh, and paper clay. I have Nicholas Ribcage in here because he was tired of not being included in filming, but I feel like he's in an awkward spot. Maybe I should move him way over here so that if he does fall, it's not gonna be a big deal. You better not fall over. Anyway, we're gonna start making those, those lips. And I'm gonna just kinda dip my fingers in the water and just kinda work this clay. And I'm gonna try to keep it as thin as possible because we want it to dry. We don't want to have to now wait an additional like day. We, we don't have the time. This is looking pretty good. I think the lips are the right thickness and it's the right shape that I'm going for. I might not have made the opening as big as I should have, but like there's really nothing I can do about that now. Moving on to the nose. Eventually. It has been a few hours. We have smoothed and sculpted and sat him by a window in the sunshine next to my cat for several hours. And he is looking so good. We're going to first paint, obviously, the pumpkin part, so his shell. And then we're gonna go in with those features. And then the last parts are gonna be that tissue paper inserts for the eyes and the teeth. I'm trying to decide if I wanna do the little like black parts for the teeth. I'm trying to decide if I wanna paint or use marker for those or little individual uh, strips of paper. I know what, what what's gonna look better. I already know the answer. It's gonna be the paper. The paper little strips are of course gonna look better, but it's like, do I wanna do it? Yes. Let's get to squeezing some paint. It's gonna take a little bit because <laughs> this is the only paintbrush that I have currently that's like good. That's all right. That's fine. I don't, I'm not a painter, guys. I, I, I like 
rarely paint. The last time I've painted was... gosh you guys look at him look at these colors i love the pink with the red and then this color when we add that little ruffle on the bottom oh my gosh he's gonna look like a little clown pumpkin and we just want to make sure that that black line is kind of going in a diagonal like way. Okay, so what I ended up doing is just drawing a couple of lines with permanent marker on a piece of paper and just kind of like looking at the shape of his mouth and guessing. <laughs> This is what we're gonna go with. I'm gonna put this on the black tissue paper and we're gonna cut it out and hope for the best. <laughs> God, look at it. It looks so good. Okay, you guys, it is time to put the tissue paper behind this soulless face. Oh, you guys, I, I'm not going to be able to handle this. You guys, the face is done. The paint is done. The tissue is done. Should I show you? Should I give you a little, like, just a quick reveal? So quick. That's all you're getting because I still have to do the burlap, like, collar now, but I'm not gonna show that. I'm gonna show it in the reveal, but he looks so good. The tissue part was tough, but he looks amazing. Uh, let's move on to the final step. And then you guys will get the big reveal.
How is he so... I... The woman was too stunned to speak. He turned out so much better. So much better than I anticipated. I mean, there there are a couple of things that that I would do better next time now making one of these, but he is so great for my first one, my first attempt. This is the kind of stuff that I want to make. You know, like that this is what I would love to make every year, a bunch of them. Sell them online and just spread the Halloween cheer. I would love to make like custom ones where people can be like, hey, I want this, I want this, I want this or whatever. This was so fun. The only tricky part really was drying, letting him dry. That was, I was just like, you've got to be dry by now. <laughs> so that, that was really the only tricky part. And if I did anything wrong, please let me know in the comments if there's like an easier way to to get these to dry. I love everything about him. The ruffles, the eyes, the mouth, the... Oh, I think I forgot something. Gotcha! Did you guys really think I wasn't gonna make the hat? Hmm? That beginning part when I was like, maybe we'll make the hat. <laughs> I tricked you. I knew I had to make a smaller one though because him being a pale, unless I somehow made the hat like fit over and then the handle was bigger. I could have made like a bigger, but I didn't want to go through that. So I made a small little pilgrim hat and he's got his little hat. He's in Pottsfield. Love how this turned out. I am over the moon. And if this inspires you to make one, please do it. It is so fun. They just look so festive and vintage and just, just darling. I hope that this inspired you. You had fun, you learned something. Once again, leave any critiques or comments or tips in the comment section or Leave your favorite part of Over the Garden Wall in the comments. I would love to hear it. I love talking about that show. It's so good. I hope you had fun, my cute and creepy friends, and I will see you in my next video.